MegaCon 2019. It's Saturday. It's our second day at the event. Mary's first day, just the second day. We're back! So while we were here yesterday, you guys can check out that video in this cart up here. Here, Yes, I am drinking Monster. No, we're not sponsored by Monster, but yes, continue to keep sending all of those memes over to us with the Kyle Drinks Monster. It's never ending. <laughs> if the parking lot entry is any indication, today is going to be a busy day. We made a stop over at Holly and Jim's booth, and they were bearing gifts. This is amazing. I almost feel like I'm gonna cry. This is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Neil Adams is here. He's sketching. We're back at 13X Studios. This is our friend Rick's booth. Check out all of the painted hockey masks. Wu Tang in the house. We're at Greg Horn's booth. Always amazing art. Oh, here's Greg himself coming over here. Greg signing a couple of prints. This is Steve too. It's evil Steve. Good Steve. Uh oh. We should check out Greg Horn art, by the way. Always amazing. So as we're making our way through the artist alley, I did want to point out that behind me is the stage for Digicon. This year, new to Megacon, they've included the subsection of Digicon, which is basically YouTube social media creators here on stage. You can do meet and greets with them or check out some of their panels as well. So we've approached 11 o'clock. Every parking space and all of the lots at the convention center are taken. The crowd is funneling in. This is what it's looking like. Comics. 3D printing by Mucky Chris. They're printing stuff right now. Yeah. It looks like it's a Yoda. There's all kinds of things. Keychains. Creature from the Black Lagoon Buddhas. Jason Buddha. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. What? It's Mary and Mary's Handmade. Look at all these people. We found our friend Sharon's Falcon. These are Lando, Lando still, Auto Museum. I have over we checked this place out so a couple of months ago. It's so not yet stay, fully open, leave, but check it out. Wrong. This is the photo op area, autograph area. We're not doing either this weekend. Look at all these Mario Kart players. All right, so we escaped the vendor room. We're heading upstairs to see the Lost Boys panel. I think this is the line to get in. If we could find where it ends. All the way online. See everything that's happening behind us. There is a Cylon Raider down there. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. Not quite as busy as Back to the Future, but there were a lot of people here. There's three chairs up there. Will Corey Feldman be part of this panel? It's supposed to be Kiefer Sutherland and Jason Patrick. Will Corey show up? Well, it, you know, it, 
it really wasn't a big hit. It was a modest hit. It, what it became was a massive, massive VHS hit. And I think that's why when you meet all these people, it has so much to do with their childhood because it was in their homes. And they come home and they watch it again and again and again and again. Um, I mean, a lot of these movies that you see here, or a lot of these classic movies, were major, major hits. This wasn't a big financial hit. I don't think the Warner Brothers knew what to do with it. I mean, they never had a, a movie like that, that style, it was rated R, they didn't know how to put it out. I mean, Joel talks about that to this day. But then it found its audience and got bigger and bigger and bigger. But I agree with Kiefer. I think we knew we were making something that was good, but certainly not all these years later did I think it would become this entrenched you know, in the culture. But what do you think it is about the movie that allows it to kind of transcend generations and stick around? What, what, what kind of keeps it there for everybody? I think one of the nice things about the film, I mean, it, it has a scary moment, but it really is a family film. Uh, and, and there's... <laughs> oh, come on, look at the way you're all dressed. Really? <laughs> um, it's, it's, you know, it, it poked fun in itself. And I think it had a real sense of humor. And I think that was a real credit to Joel Schumacher. And he found that and nurtured that. And by the way, I think you all look awesome. <laughs> to fruition, was that something you want to be a part of? Would you, would you want to return to the to the to the show? Me personally, no. Uh, I, you know, Lost Boys was such a kind of special moment in time uh, for me as an actor and what it represents kind of over the last thirty years. Uh, some things just need to be left alone. You know, and I, <laughs> Same, same answer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're just calling yeah. it Lost Boys. It had nothing to do with any of the experience any of these people had. It's just, it's commerce now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like we're in the kind of this time now. We're seeing a lot of sequels and, and, and reboots. Is that? Do you? Are, do you feel the same way about about that? Are you? Are you a person like? Do you like to go watch a reboot of a movie, or is it just like? It, it's kind of. It's, you're kind of root, you're rooting in it, right? It's, it's a little sacred to go and touch some of these originals that they're remaking. Is that is that right? I, I mean, it, they're only rebooting very successful things, so they didn't fail in any way. Yeah. So it, it's really just about getting a brand thing that you can make some money off. And I, I think everybody knows that. So no Corey Feldman. That was a fun panel. The rumor is that Corey Feldman was not invited intentionally to this panel because Kiefer did not want him yeah. as a part of the panel. We have a congregation of Spider-Men. What is happening? We're heading back in, but sadly Swamp Thing is heading out. We're at Wild Bills, we paid for one cup. We have different pricing, a single barrel versus double barrel, but it's basically starting at 25 bucks a drink for the weekend, craft sodas, and believe me, each bottle of soda at the vendors is normally about five bucks, including water. So there are plenty of water fountains, but I love the grape and black cherry, and we're filling them up. The autograph area is bustling this year. We've got a lot of talent here. Rose McIver, Dan Fogler, you remember from Fantastic Beasts, as well as the Goldbergs, Stephen Amell, John Bowerman, David Tennant, Corey Feldman, Ki Hoi Kwan, Sean Astin. Oh, by the way, Kwan, I have not seen him at an uh, appearance before. Our short round from Indiana Jones. Tyler Hoechlin and Zachary Levy is here too. Uh, Levi? Levy? On the other side of the convention center, we have Jason, David, Frank from Power Rangers, and they have the cast of Boy Meets World. I am not waiting to meet Boy Meets World because Mr. Feeney is not here and I'm boycotting this. No Mr. Feeney, no Boy Meets World. Tahiti, it's a magical place. <laughs> Coming in, we're infiltrating S.H.I.E.L.D. The Tesseract. Spoiler alert! So ran into Super Dave. He put together all of this goodness. Yeah. 
Is there a favorite piece? Yeah. Favorite piece? Oh man. Um, honestly, I, I yeah, I'd probably do this, this right here. That would be my favorite. Hand constructed. It's it's out of ABS plastic. Um, it, it actually came from China. Okay. So I did have to modify it myself to make it fit, you know, my hand. Okay. But so it fits. But that, 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 I have a lot of fun with that. All right. And this is recently constructed. It works. It's still proof that Tony Stark had a heart. He had, has. Well, unless you put them together, then he'd be a time lord. <laughs> We missed the R2s yesterday, so we're gonna go check these out for a minute. They even have a pit droid. How do you get the pit droid to stop? Punch it in its nose. Come on. Awesome R2P49. R2JB, I like the colors, but I see my favorite droid of all time, and he actually does what he's supposed to do. It's a gunk droid, AKA power droid. My dream was to see these come to life walking around in Galaxy's Edge. Here's the brand new droid that will be in the Rise of Skywalker. The replica is already made. Chopper. Here's my other favorite version of R2, serving drinks. Roger, Roger. We've reached that point in the day where we just need to sit down, relax, recharge, watch all the people go by. being visited on the floor from our friend R2 and our other friend Aaron, who's also R2, the living embodiment. There's nothing to fear here. Batman, Nightwing, they're watching us. It's a giant pork. Oh my goodness. Oh. Cat, Iron Patriot. I am Groot. Hulkbuster is amazing. Lightsaber, lightsaber. I want to hold my lightsaber. Look at that Sith holocron. Hey and a rebel holocron. The level up outfitters. They have this amazing gauntlet shirt. That's awesome. At U3D, you can make a 3D printed image of yourself, either as yourself in regular clothes or cosplay images. Very similar to like the D Tech type Stormtrooper statue that you guys have asked me about in the past that we did at Star Wars Weekends years past. But there's all different types of varied pricing. Step in the booth, they 3D scan you, and you get yourself printed out as Spider Man. It's awesome. The cries have not died down, but that's not stopping Pikachu. Pika Pika. Snorlax in the house. Oh my goodness. Star Trek, Michelle Nichols is here for her farewell tour. She looks fantastic. Look at that. Wow. All right, we're gonna check out the Museum of Costumes and Curiosities. This is a Venetian gown. Victorian John Watson. Day dress. This is pretty awesome. Ordinary morning dress. Halo 4 Scout. Jedi Temple Guard. The Machina Mensch, aka Futura. And these were actually all made by 
Jedi Master Kyla Viz. Look at that lightsaber. It's pretty ornate. I like this guy. It looks like you while you're watching TV. Tamatoa. It's a Snow White Huntress. Pocahontas. England visit dress. Ariel. Ursula. Here's a librarian. Steampunk. Balthazar. It's the boiler breaker. Look at that. It's like Iron Man steampunk. Captain America steampunk. The Wind Witch. Astrid. These dresses are from Hamilton. And Victorian Captain America. As we sit on the couch, just relaxing, there's some mysterious red balloons back there just floating down. All right, Orange County Convention Center, we're getting out of here for the day. Well, this brings to a close yet another awesome day at Megacon. Megacon day two for us, day three of the actual event. Started off amazing. This amazing drawing from Jim Ballant. I am blown away still um, from such awesome generosity from folks that we've touched in videos. You never know when you're putting things out who's watching or what kind of an impact you're making on folks when you're sharing your life with them. And this um, it's just absolutely amazing. We'll be putting this in a frame and putting up on the wall soon. I think this Megacon so far has been the most cosplay free Megacon for us and there were a ton of people dressed up today. I will be honest there's a lot of people that are wearing uh, what are like the, the newer um, latex type suits that are sh kind of stretchy and um, just have like a sublimated print all over them. We started seeing them uh, I think last year at uh, the con that we went to in Tampa and now we've really seen the advent of like everyone wearing them. There's a lot of phoenixes, and I'll tell you about. I'll tell you what. There's more lazy Thor or fat Thor cosplayers than any other people we've seen this weekend. It's usually Deadpool, you know, in ridiculous numbers, and this time around it's like Lebowski Thor version. It, we counted like I think 23 of them today just walking around and it, it's incredible. I'm going to try to get back to Megacon again tomorrow for day four of the event, day three for me. Uh, Mary and Jess won't be with but I uh, want to be able to try to get some of the cosplay around and try to sum things up but for now thanks a lot for coming along. Thank you very much for all of your likes and your comments and your subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night. We'll see you guys.